All right, well, this is just going to be a brief video on vector-borne infections of the blood. So let's get our table out and talk about a few vector-borne infections that affect red blood cells and some white blood cells. We're going to be talking about the vectors. These are the species that actually transmit these diseases, these infections. We're going to talk about the microbial organisms that cause the infection. This is the tiny animals, the tiny bugs that you can't see. We're going to be talking about mainly parasites and bacteria. Next, we have the pathogen class. Like I just said, parasite and bacteria are the two big ones for this presentation. The target, we're we'll talking about what these, uh, what these vectors and microbial organisms eventually infect what cell in the human body. So it could be monocytes, could be red blood cells. We'll see. We'll talk about it. And we're going to talk about what the disease is called formally. This should be a more recognizable name, some clinical features of the disease, and how we go about making a diagnosis of that disease. So let's jump right into it. First thing we got is this tick, this vector called the lone star tick, um, aptly named because of the lone star on its back. It carries Erlichia species. Erlichia is the genus. Um, there are a couple other in the Erlichia species, and Erlichia is a bacteria. So when this tick carries around the bacteria Erlichia, they target monocytes, and the bacteria eventually get inside monocytes and infect them. This is called human monocytotropic Erlichiosis, and this name in and of itself helps you remember a lot of what you need to know about this disease. It's uh, It infects monocytes, monocytotropic, and the bacterial genus is called Erlichiosis, so that's great. Some clinical features are, are pretty ambiguous, fever, headache, malaise, sometimes myalgia, sometimes you get a rash too. The, the common ones, fever, headache, and malaise are uh, are pretty pretty standard for a lot of infections, so that's not it's not too characteristic. And we diagnose this by doing an indirect fluorescent antibody or a, or a PCR test. Either of those methods work. Next, we have this guy. Uh, this is a tick who has black legs, so it's called the black-legged tick. Black-legged tick carries around the anaplasma species. Anaplasma is again another type of bacteria and these bacteria end up in the granulocytes. These are the only two bacteria we're talking about and both of their diseases are uh, pretty easy to remember uh, quite a bit about the diseases. So human granulocytic anaplasmosis comes from the anaplasma microbe genus and it infects granulocytes. So see very similar symptoms here um, except minus the rash. So again fever, myalgia, Headache, malaise, just ambiguous general infection syndromes, and the diagnosis can be on a blood smear. So you can actually see this one on a blood smear, unlike the lone star ticks infection. You can, uh, you can also use PCR as usual, and of course, serology. Next we have, next vector is the mosquito. This one's recognizable. A lot of people see these things, a lot of people hate these things. But you all can guess what this guy carries. Well, maybe not, it might not be so obvious yet, but the mosquito carries around Plasmodium falciparum. This is a parasite, and the target is red blood cells and liver cells. The disease, of course, that I'm talking about is malaria. Now we say it has two targets because when malaria affects the body, it first enters the liver cells and then spreads to the red cells. So it has like a like an initial early phase where it starts replicating in the liver cells before infecting the red blood cells. Malaria clinically presents as a fever, fatigue, vomiting, headaches. Sometimes you end up seeing yellow skin, uh, jaundice is what it's called, seizures and coma, and this could also eventually cause death. We diagnose malaria with a blood smear with rapid diagnostic tests and PCR. And rapid diagnostic tests are really just a quick blood test that has been developed to identify a patient with malaria. This is uh, pretty helpful for people who do mission work, uh, for doctors that go abroad, to be able to see if a patient has malaria pretty quickly uh, to, to hopefully administer drugs and, and help that patient as soon as possible. Next bug we have should look familiar. It's again the black-legged tick. In the, this disease, we're looking specifically at the nymphal stage of the black-legged tick. We're looking at the Babesia genus. Uh, several Babesia species are also carried in the black-legged tick. Babesia are parasites, unlike uh, the anaplasma that the black-legged tick also carries, which are bacteria. 
and these Babesia parasites infect red blood cells. This disease is aptly called Babesiosis. And in the clinic, it looks flu-like, like many of the other ones we talked about. We see some hemolytic anemia. These are red blood cells that are being lysed. Uh, as a result, there is dark urine. The red blood cells can release hemoglobin. And if uh, that released hemoglobin is overwhelming the liver, the liver cannot process it all. It might be passed in the urine. <laughs> And we get uh, dark urine as a result of babesiosis. Um, and of course, sometimes babesiosis is just asymptomatic and we don't see anything. Babesiosis can be diagnosed with a blood smear, a PCR, or serology. Next we have another guy, the reduvid bug. I believe this is also called the kissing bug. Um, and it's specifically the feces of the reduvid bug. Uh, so this bug crawls on your face, sounds kind of gross, crawls on your face, um, probably at night, probably when you're, not, when you're not looking, bites your face, and it's not the bite that causes the infection, it's the feces that it drops inside the bite. It's this reduvid bug droppings that uh, that's what causes the disease. It carries the trypanosoma species, um, which is of course another parasite, and these trypanosoma parasites infect monocytes and macrophages disease we're talking about here is American trypanosomiasis, uh, commonly known as Chagas disease. Now it's important to note that there is an American trypanomyosis and there's also an African trypanomyosis. African trypanomyosis is caused by a different bug uh, and the American trypanomyosis is called Chagas disease for short. African trypanomyosis is called African sleeping sickness. So that might sound familiar to you. Um, it's the same parasite it's the trypanosoma species, but believe it's a different bug. I'll have to double check that. Some clinical features of American trypanomyosis or Chagas disease are swelling of the eyelids near the bite. So this bug crawling around your face, bites you, drops its droppings into your, into your body, and you have swelling of the eyelids near the bite. We diagnose this by looking at the blood smear, and we can also use a bone marrow biopsy, muscle biopsy, or a bone marrow aspirate. When we stick a big needle into the bones, grab some bone marrow, slurp it up, and then spread it on a plate. Uh, so you definitely want to see some blood or some bone marrow when diagnosing this guy. This little fly is just a sand fly, particularly the female carries the Leishmania species. Leishmania is another parasite, this one targets macrophages and other phagocytic cells, and this carries leishmaniasis, also appropriately named for the, leishmania, the leishmania species. Clinical species. Me, clinical features of this guy includes fever, weight loss, liver and spleen swelling, as well as anemia, and the diagnosis for this one is simple. Uh, maybe not too simple, but it's easy to remember. It's just bone marrow or splenic aspirate. Uh, we suck up, again, a piece of the bone marrow or part of the spleen, and we smear that on a plate, and we look at what the cells look like, see if they're affected by leishmaniasis. So these six diseases uh, are all pretty important vector-borne infections of the blood. Two of them are caused by bacteria. That's human monocytotropic religiosis and human granulocytic anaplasmosis. Uh, the names of those diseases tell you quite a bit. The other four are caused by parasites. Malaria is probably worth looking into, worth knowing a lot more about, worth knowing maybe the life cycle of the parasite and how it's transmitted by mosquito. And the other three should all be name recognition ones, babesiosis, leishmaniasis, and Chagas disease. It might also be worth looking over looking into the African trypanosomiasis, uh, also called sleeping sickness, also caused by the trypanosoma species of parasite. This has been a short presentation on vector-borne infections of the blood. Thanks for listening.